Ready. Ready. No. Hey guys, second class of the course concrete design. We started last lecture. Uh, our beam design. And we said we're going to understand the behavior, then we're going to move into the design after we understand the mechanism or the mechanics of reinforced concrete beams. And we started with single reinforced rectangular sections. Single reinforced rectangular sections. We covered the behavior or we understood the behavior of what? What kind of section or at what region? We said this is how you imagine. We have a beam put under semi-support condition, under the tenuous also machine or under a testing machine, and that beam will be loaded from zero till failure. So we loaded that beam up to just before cracking. We covered that the other day. So we can calculate at what moment the beam will be cracked. We call it MCR, I'm cracking. So the section to calculate the I'm cracking is into me. The section is uncracked transform. We always have to work, we have to have the word transform, because we need to transform the steel into equivalent equivalent area of concrete. Because we have a reinforced concrete, we have a composite section. So we cover the first one. And track transform section. Right? From there we calculated I U T and track transform and we calculated and C R the cracking moment. The moment at which the section will crack. Now the second stage, when the section is cracked. So the second one is crack section. What's happening after cracking? What's the behavior? What do you see? Okay. So the section will look like that. I draw the section and we discussed before we leave. But I'm gonna sketch it again and. Review. So when the section crack, as I said, the crack will go along the depth of the beam. How much the crack go? Halfway, two thirds. It depends on the strength of the concrete and it depends on the amount of steel that we are providing, the cross section and the steel reinforcement. Right? If you don't have if you have no steel, as you guys noticed, it will go all the way. Two pieces. Because of the steel, the crack will not go all the way. The steel will start holding, stitching the crack together. Okay? That's why we have steel in the concrete. Okay? So if you have too little steel, the crack will jump really high. So my section now is taking at the crack. And the first crack, as we agreed, will occur at the maximum moment location. So that's the section there. Let's assume, as I said, the crack will go all the way up to here. So whatever below this one is in tension. Below this axis, which is the neutral axis, everything below is in tension. Right? And one of the assumptions, one of the major assumptions in concrete, in reinforced concrete design, we ignore the concrete in tension. Because the tensile strength of concrete is small, we ignore it. So everything here that is concrete is ignored. It doesn't mean it's not there. It is very essential, essential to maintain the composite action between the concrete and the compression and the concrete and the tension. It is there, but its strength is very small. So if you ignore it, not a big deal. But it is there to cover the steel and to connect the steel with the concrete. So this concrete is ignored. What's left at the bottom here is the steel. Now you're going to tell me, is the steel by itself? No, as I said, the, the steel is encased by the tension, the concrete in tension. So that's what's there in the tension side, the steel. I need to transform the steel into equivalent area of concrete. 
as I told you, it is equal to NAS. NAS. In this guy, we have to have like N minus 1. As I told you, we took one of those Ns to fill the voids in the section. What's left in the steel is N minus 1. I explained this very well in the first lecture. So now what we have in here is N minus, sorry, NAS. What's here is concrete in compression. And we know concrete in compression develop strength. Concrete is strong in compression. And the distances are given for you for the cross section that we are studying. This is what? B. The distance from the top compression side or face to the center of the steel is what? D. D. So this distance from here to here <coughs> is D. So what's this distance now from the top compression phase to the neutral axis? We said it's a fraction of D. And I named it as a factor times D. We called it KD. KD, which we need to calculate. Right? We know from study that sum of the moment of the areas above the neutral axis equals sum of the moment of the areas below the neutral axis. Okay? So I can say the following. B times KD, that's the area, right? B, KD. Times the distance from the neutral axis of that area, the distance from the centroid of that area to the neutral axis, equal this area, which is in tension, times the distance from the centroid of this area to the neutral axis. Some of the moment of the areas above and below the neutral axis are equal. Mm -hmm. Right? So I have B, KD, that's the area. B, KD, times, what? KD over 2. Yes, it's K times D. Don't get confused with what's KD. It's K times D. K is a factor. Less than 1. B, KD, B, KD times KD over 2. The distance from here to here. Equal. This times the distance from here to here. Equal. And AS times what? D minus KD. D minus KD. <laughs> So whatever on the left is equal to what, guys? N, A, S, take 1D outside, D, 1 minus K, right? Mm -hmm. Right? I have D here, 2Ds, and I have D here. Cancel 1 from each side. Right? So I have, what else I can cancel? Nothing, I think. So I have B, D, k squared over 2 equal n a s right minus n a s what k you agree you guys agree on this <coughs> We divide by BD. Look. K squared over 2. I divide it by BD. Equal. And AS divided by D. Have you seen something called AS over BD? Mm -hmm. The rho. 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 The steel ratio is AS divided by BD. And by the way, what's BD by definition? What? Effective What's the name? Effective area. BD is the effective area. D, effective depth. Okay? So NAS over BD, I'm going to write it directly, is what? N rho minus N, right? AS over BD is rho. I'm going to tell you what it is. Is everybody following? There was a BD here and the BD here. 
AS over VD is rho. AS over VD is rho. Right? So this is quadratic equation, right? Look, k squared, <coughs> I'm gonna multiply by two now. Plus two m rho k minus two n rho equals zero. Mm -hmm. Guys, is n unknown? The modular relation? Is it unknown? Is E of concrete known? Of course. Mm -hmm. Is E of steel known? Of course. These are material properties. Stress strain diagram for concrete and steel is defined known, given to you. Right? Material properties are given to you. So if ES is known and E concrete is known, M is known. And I'm telling you we are doing analysis. It means rho is given to us. It means rho is given to us. The area of steel is given, the B and D are given to us. Right? So if rho is given and N is given, K can be calculated depending on them. So K have a relationship between is related to N and rho only. So you know what's the solution for this? When you have uh, what do you call it? A ay squared plus sorry x squared plus dx plus c equals zero. The quadratic equation, right? The general law or the solution. What's the solution? Is minus b, right? Minus so k equal uh, solution a equal minus b. Where is b? At the top. B is two. This two and rho. That's the factor of k. So this is k squared plus b k minus c. Minus C. Mm -hmm. So minus B is minus 2 and rho. Plus minus square root of B square. This guy square. What? 4 and square rho square. Right? Minus 4 AC. Minus 4 times 1 times this guy. Minus times minus is plus. 4 times 2 and rho over what? 2a, which is 1. Do you agree, guys? Math. I'm not going to review math. High school math. Even fifth grade math. Listen. k is a positive value. It cannot be a negative value, right? So the minus minus is not an option. Minus minus is not an option. It has to be minus positive. So the answer is positive, right? So, see the 4 in here, right? And there's another 4 in here. We will take it out of the square root, become 2. two. So we have 2 here, 2 here, 2 here. Gun, 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 and gun. You agree? Now, what we have? <coughs> what do we have? We have equal minus m rho plus, right? What's in there? <coughs> n squared rho squared. Square root of n squared rho squared plus 2 n rho minus that. So k is square root of n squared rho squared plus 2 n rho. That's under the square root, out of the square root, minus n rho. Do you see it? That's the equation for k. So you're going to tell me what's k? Remember what I told you? See, you know what's k, guys? What's the physical meaning of k? Is how much the crack will go up when the section cracked. I told you, it depends on how much steel you have. It depends on how much B and D. And it depends on the strength of material, which is the modulus of elasticity of the concrete and the steel, which is in there. That's rho and that's m. So it's a function of m and rho. And those are function of the amount of steel, the cross-section dimension, all of these things. Right? So that's the equation of k. So we know k now. So we know k. Good? So we know this distance. Right? So we know this distance. If someone is telling you now, 
Can you calculate for me something called I crack? Now, if you know what's K, what's I crack? So easy. Now, what is it? Um, B times B. No. You're going to tell me this thing. 1 over 12 B, yeah. KD, Q, right? Yeah. Plus E, KD, times the distance from here to here, square. Now, listen. Remember this guy? from statics. This is B and H. What's the moment of inertia of this section? E. Don't be afraid of E H B Yeah. You know if you don't know this one, just open the door and B H Q over twelve. B H Q over twelve. Okay? Now, right? Now listen. If the axis that you are referring to is touching the bottom face or the top face. Because before you answer me, what's the moment of inertia of this section about this axis? H cube over 3. H cube over 3. And by the way, this is just applying the parallel axis theorem. It is B H cube over 12 plus B H times the square distance between them. When you put them together, it gives you B H cube over 3. Is this the case here? Is the axis that we want to calculate the one touching the bottom of this component? Yes. So it's 1 over 3 times this, times this cube. 1 over 3 B K D cube. Our H in that is K D. Don't do like some of the mistakes students make. It's K D cube. They don't cube the K. It's K cube in there. They end up with a huge value for the moment of inertia. Plus, this component, what's the contribution of this one to the moment of inertia? We said the moment of inertia of this component above its neutral axis, we assume this, this height is so small, so the HQ will give me zero. So we just take A times the distance from the centroid of this one to apply reference axis. So it's going to be MAS times D minus KD squared. Sorry, yeah, D minus KD squared plus <coughs> MAS D minus. KD square. You guys took structural analysis, right? Some took it with me, some with other professor. When you calculate the deflection, right, you always have at the bottom like 5WL to the power 4 over 384 EI, right? PL cube over 3EI, whatever over 48EI. At the bottom, there is always I, right? That I, if you talk about concrete, is what? Is I crack. Or I shift it. Part of the crack, part of the beam will be cracked, another part will not be cracked. So we take something called I effective. But before calculating I effective, you need to know what's I crack. Okay? We're going to cover one section, serviceability. We will use that term. We will use that term. I'm going to remind you on that section. Okay? So that's the crack. Moment of inertia. Much smaller than the I and crack transform. Much, much smaller. Not even 40% from that. Will not reach 40% from that. Okay, guys? <coughs> so that's how we get. K, that's the derivation of K, so you know it. In design 8, there is a table in the book, and that's what we're going to use for N values, whatever N, for whatever rho, just pick what's K. It's calculated for you. It's not a magic. How they calculated that for you? This equation. Just put it in a spreadsheet. You can do the same as what they are doing. I write it for you. You know it now. You know what's the physical meaning of K. It's the location of the neutral axis. Good. Now let's do stress analysis. So what's happening at the crack section here? How much the stress is? What's the stress? What's the section look like? Look. You draw a line. That's at the face of the section. 
So I cut half of the beam and I look. This is the depth of the beam. Right? That's the neutral axis. What's this distance from here to here? KD. I want to see what are the stresses. I want to see what are the stresses. Right? Remember, this case here, we are still going to talk about something called stress elastic. Stresses are still, still elastic. And the stress distribution is linear. I'm going to tell you what's the ACI considered. What are the limits in the concrete and what are the limits in the steel for at which or below which the section is still is in the elastic region? There are limits. The stress in the concrete should not exceed how much? 50% of F prime C. So if the stresses in the concrete are below 0.5 F prime C, the section is still considered in the elastic region. If the stresses in the steel are below, give me a number out of Fy, point nine. This point four Fy is considered elastic. I know it's elastic up to the Y, but at point four, usually you are reaching the point five of prime C. You will see. And that, from there, we're going to calculate something called an elastic limit, or an elastic. That's the moment at which the section will change from elastic, the stress distribution will change from el linear elastic to plastic or non-linear. Okay? Non-linear behavior. So there are stresses here, right? There are stresses here. That's the neutral axis. The neutral axis means the stress, the bending stress is <coughs> zero. There are stresses. This is the stress distribution. Look, reinforced concrete design, guys, it's all about understanding the stress distribution and the strain distribution. If you understand the stress distribution, the strain distribution, you can write every equation in the reinforced concrete. So this is the condition of the stress. Right? This is what we have in this above here. Is it concrete or steel? Concrete. So this is the stress in what? In the concrete. And it is conversion. So I'm going to call it what? Fc. That's the compressive stress in the concrete. What do we have in here? We have the steel, right? We have the steel. And the steel will be stressed with what? Fs. There's a stress in the steel, right? There's a stress in the steel. The steel bars are stressed. How much? Fs. If I multiply the area of the bars by Fs, do I get T? How much tension we have in the bars? Right. Area times stress equal force, which is tensile. That's the tension in the section. How much? And AS FS. Transform the area of the steel times the stress in the steel, right? <coughs> equal now what do we have at the top here so we have stresses here see the, the stress in the concrete and they are linear if I sum or integrate this stress over the area what do I get compression right? what's the resultant of this stress distribution this is a stress distribution right there is FC here there is zero here and it's linear so this is a triangle. What's the result of this triangle? KEFC minus 5 FA. Yes. This times that divided by 2. That's over the width B. All of this is stressed over that area. So all of this width have this distribution. So this will give me C, compression, equal what? The stress area, which is what, guys, said, half KD times FC times the width, which is B. So the area is KD B, right? 
half times KD times FC, that's this area, times the width, that will give you how much compression? Right? Is T equal to C? That's the result. T equal C. Right? T equal C. All of the derivation will be about tension equal compression. Tension equal compression. This is a couple of force, guys. This is internal force. This is what's happening. Due to the external force, there is an internal coupled developed, which is the resistance. You remember phi m you remember m n greater or equal m ultimate, or phi m n equal greater or equal m ultimate? That's m n. It's t or c times the distance between them. That's a couple, right? The definition of a couple, two equal forces and opposite. Multiply either of them times the distance between them, they give you a moment. Right? So what's the internal moment developed by that? So, first of all, what's the distance from here to here? One third KD. So KD over three, one third KD. Mm -hmm. So the distance between the two forces is what? It's T times D minus KD over three. Why did I do this? Why did I do this? KD over T. What's this distance from here to here? It is D minus KD over T. Okay. So the moment is T times this distance, or C times this distance, right? I'm equal. T <coughs> times D minus KD over 3 equal T D 1 minus K over 3. You agree? You guys agree? Do you agree about this? See this guy in here? 1 minus K over 3. See this guy? We're going to call it J. J is small. So if someone's asking what's J, you tell him 1 minus K over 3. So if we know K, do we know J? Yes, 1 minus K over 3. If we know rho and n, we know K. And if we know K, we know J. And it's given to you in that table. That table will give you for every rho, based on the n, how much is K and how much is J. J is 1 minus K over 3. Just for simplification. So m equal, again, what? T, what? JD, right? T times K. This is J now. So T, JD. Or equal what? C, JD. Equal, what's T? N, A, S, F, S, JD. <coughs> Equal half KD FC B KD. This is C. This is C. Half KD FC B times JD. That's the Good? That's in general. That's in general. That's how much the moment. That's how much. The moment and that's based on the magnitude of the stress in the steel and in the concrete. Now the question is, by definition, what is M elastic limit? What did we say about the elastic limit? FC, by the way, this is FC, not F prime C. This is FC, not F prime C. FC for the elastic limit. FC is the limit, at the limit, how much? 0.5 F prime C. Or, FY equal what? 0.4 FY, you're gonna tell me where you get this from? That's the ACI code. 
these are assumptions. These are assumptions. These are the stresses expected at what load, you think? At the service loads. Remember I used to talk about the service load? At the service loads, at the normal service loads, not the ultimate loads, the day-to-day -day application, service dead load, service live load, you expect the stresses in the concrete to be less than 0.5 of runs, and the stress in the steel less than 0.4 of 1. Okay? Okay? So what's on the elastic phase? Good. Now you plug in there. The first one, for the concrete, it is half KD what? Of prime C over 2 instead of FC B KD. Equal to K, D, so we write it like that. So we group things together. K, J, K, J, of prime C, B, B squared, right? Right? Did anything wrong, Laura? Um, did you write uh, FY, you chose point four FY? This one? Yeah. Why? Yeah, it can be only zero. There is same both sides. Sorry. What's that? No, that's FS. That's the stress in the steel. When the limit is 0.4 of Y. After 0.4 of Y, this analysis doesn't apply. This analysis doesn't apply. Why? Because the stress distribution in the concrete is what? Nonlinear. It's not linear like that. The location of the resultant is different. The magnitude of the resultant is different. It needs integration. Right? Non-linear. This is the limit up to which we are considering the stresses in the concrete linear. Or I'm elastic. Or I'm elastic equal T times J D, which is M A S. What's FS now? What is it? One four of Y. Okay. Which one control? There is a. There is a value. It means the section reached its elastic limit. If this one reached its elastic limit. Before this one, that's the elastic limit. Okay? If this is smaller than this one, I'm elastic is the lesser one. This? The smaller one. Go ahead, Paul. Well, I understand the top one, the M elastic relating to the concrete, but you say <coughs> the bottom one could also be the case, the 0.4 FY. Yeah. But we know the steel is elastic much, much, much longer than that. Why is it no longer valid? You see what I mean? Because if it's more than 1.4, this would become highly stressed the concrete. So the first M elastic, the KDF prime C, would, would always control in that okay. case? No, not They're almost very close. They're always close. They're right? almost close. You will see the amount close, check your calculation again. Okay. Okay, but this is what you expect at the service load. By the way, what's the link with what I say? What I said, I'm elastic, I'm elastic, and I cracked elastic. Remember when I said elastic? Remember the deflection, guys? The deflection are evaluated for the elastic section. The deflections are calculated at the elastic region for these conditions. That's how the deflection equation, the reinforced concrete, were developed based on the elastic performance. Okay? So that's the elastic limit. So if I, I give you a section, by now, if I give you a concrete section, twelve inch, 
24 inch. B. Number 9. center, you should be able by now to calculate the form. You have a section like that. Okay? A prime C is given, a Y is given. You should be able to calculate MCR, <coughs> IUT, and crack transform, and elastic, and I crack. For a given reinforced concrete rectangular single reinforced beam, you should be able by now. This is what we covered last lecture, and this is what we are covering right now. This is what we are covering right now. You should be able to calculate those two. But check yourself when you go home. Should not take that much time. That much from your time. Good. So what's after that? What's after? And ultimate. And ultimate. Or denominator. Three. Ultimate. This is here. C. This is C. That's the stress distribution. That's the stress distribution. You know where they came with this here? Where they come up with this? <coughs> so this says at certain point here, or at certain depth here, this area will have this concrete at this location will have higher stress than this location here. Right? Mm -hmm. It means this is not F prime C. This is not F prime C. It's a fraction of F prime C. Right? It's a fraction of F prime C. Right? And this is factor from here. 
function. Now this is what what is not good, what we will use. We will transform this into something called equivalent rectangular A. We will transform this one into equivalent rectangle so that we use it for the design. Just to give you where we get this from. Look, now let's recall how good you are with compound. I'm going to draw the stress train, stress train diagram for compound. This is epsilon. This is sigma 4 concrete. I said the distribution is considered linear up to what? 0.5 f primes. So we expect linear. This is in the compression. The tension is ignored. The tension is linear, very small value. I'm doing compression. We care less about the concrete intention. Ignore. So kind of linear. And this is what? Because when it's linear, Hoch's law is still valid. Law is, by the way, if you are interested in calculating the strain for that section up to the elastic limit, stress divided by E. Get it. Hoch's law is still valid. Here, Fox law is no longer valid. The strain, the stress, strain, the stress and strain are not related with E. How we get them? From the stress strain distribution. We are above this now. What's this here we said? What's this? 0.5 F prime C. After that, it is nonlinear. Nonlinear. Does it fail here? No. Go a little bit down, right? Goes down. Right? Yeah. You remember? Do you test the cylinders? It looks something like that, right? So once you reach a high value, before it fails, it stray a little bit more, then it fails. Right? Why? Because there will be some cracking in here. Some cracking. That means the strength goes down. But still can take some strain or deflect a little bit. Right? So look. This is what? The strain at ultimate. The strain at which the section gave up. So this is what? Epsilon ultimate. This is very important assumption. This is a fixed point in reinforced concrete design. You know how much the code assumes this? Assume the concrete will crush when the strain in compression reaches what? Zero. Zero. Three. This number is like your name. The concrete will crush or the section will give up, will give up when the strain in the concrete in, at, in the compression reaches 0 0.003 and this is based, the analysis is based on that this is like fixed point strain in the concrete 0 0.003 remember I told you the neutral axis keep pushing up till the strain in the concrete reaches 0 0.003 failure now how would you say this is compression failure it depends at that time or at that moment how much was the strain in the steel was the strain in the steel below yield, at the yield, above yield, based on that we define. If by the time the strain in the concrete reaches 0 0.003, the strain in the steel just 0 0.002, you know what's 0 0.002, right? That's epsilon y. That's the yield strain in the steel. It is 0 0.0027. Let me say 0 0.002. That's they call it. Balanced condition. The stream just the st sorry the steel just yielded by the time the concrete crushed. Is this something good? The name is good, balanced, but it's not good at all. There is no safety. There is no cracking. There is no signs of failure. That's what's not a flexural or a ductile member behave. The ductile member gave us some indication before it fails. So we want the strain in the steel to be more than 0 0.002. So that we have signs, there's yielding, there's cracking, there's something going on, right? So if the strain in the steel is more than that, it's good. How much do you want more than that? We're going to study all of that one. There's something called tension controlled sections. Tension controlled section, good sections. If the strain in the steel at ultimate, what, what, do, you mean, what do you mean by ultimate? You tell me, strain in the concrete point 003, that's the definition of ultimate. If the strain in the steel was more than 0 0.005, 0 
called 0, 0, 0.05. We call that section tension control section. The fee factor is the maximum you can use, which is 0.9. When I drive all of that, I'm going to mention it in detail. Now, what if the strain in the steel, <coughs> the strain in the steel was this than 0.002? The strain, the steel even did not yield when the failure occurred. We call that section what? Over reinforced. Putting too much reinforcement for nothing. Too much steel for nothing. You're wasting steel. Not giving me any safety. The segment still breaks? It breaks. Collapsed before even you reaching the yielding strain of steel. That's over reinforced. Balanced. 0.003 in the concrete, 0.002. Under reinforced. Under reinforced doesn't mean bad, as I told you. When they say in the steel more than 0.002, it's under reinforced, it's good. The word under reinforced, it's not bad. Under reinforced. Now, when the strain is 0.005, that is tension control section. Okay? Over reinforced, balanced, under reinforced, tension control. You know how much the ductility when the strain in the steel 0.005? Think about it. What's the definition of ductility? Okay. Delta at ultimate divided by delta yielding. Or strain at ultimate divided by strain at yielding. As I'm telling you, the strain at ultimate, I'm asking you, tension control section, the strain, at the, the strain is 0 0.005, right? What's the yielding strain of steel? 0 0.002, right? I just said 0 0.002. So 0 0.005 divided by 0 0.002, 5 over 2, which is 2.5. So the tension control sections, they must have at least 2.5 ductility. That's a sign. That's after you yield, after you reach the yield, 2.5 times, that's all signs. Something is going on. There's big cracks. The cracks becoming wide. Deflection, voice for the yielding. These are all signs of failure. That's what do we expect from a ductile member. A ductile, which is a beam. An example of a ductile member is a beam. Okay, guys? We're going to write all that. You see this one here? They brought it as is. They flipped it somehow, and it is right there. See this guy? It is this guy. See this point here? It's this point here. See this one here? It's this one here. Now, let me define things for you. See who's good with us, with, with concrete, with the concrete. Can someone tell me the concrete reach its ultimate stress? F prime C, what's the strain? Can't miss it, actually. This is what, F prime C. Will it crush? crush when you, when you reach this one, no. there will be something called softening or degradation of the concrete. It will not fail when it's, once it's reached this one. There will be degradation and it will fail when the strain reaches this. But at what strain it reaches this? This is 0 0.003. Guess. 0 0.002. That's the guess. 0 0.002. The, the, the concrete reaches F prime C at 1.002 strain. Good? So, approximately how much do you think the concrete will, when it reaches 1.003? How much do you think this one? Now, this is the failure. This is the failure. At failure, we know the strain is 0.003. What's the stress? How much you said? I said 0.9. 0.85 Afrancia. 0.85 Afrancia. Okay? <laughs> so this is the condition. This is the condition. This is the actual stress behavior at altitude. Okay? Now, the stress is non-linear. As I said, I'm going, we're going to replace it with, with, we're going to replace it with, equivalent rectangular, stress distribution. Equivalent, rectangular stress distribution, and that will be the basis for our analysis. This is T. <coughs> by, by the way, you know what's this? The distance from here to here, the distance from the neutral axis to the top, C small. C small. Very important. And this distance from here to here is what? D. Distance from the top to the steel is D. So C is the location of the neutral axis from top 
to here. Considering the nonlinear behavior, you will see. <coughs> this is equivalent rectangle stress condition. They are actually equivalent. They did some derivation, some approximation, some approximate values. They come up with this, this to be equivalent. For two systems to be equivalent, two static systems to be equivalent, two system forces, remember from statics? If I have five forces to be replaced with resultant, what did we do? The forces must be equal. F1 plus F2 plus F10 must be equal. Ah, cannot have like 10 plus 5 plus 6, not equal 21. Right? So the forces, some of the forces must be equal. What else? What? The moment that those forces generate about any point must be equal to the moment that the resultant generate at that point. Right? To replace forces with a resultant should be equal in terms of magnitude and their moment should be equal. If they are equal and their moment is not equal, they are not equivalent at all. You guys forget this from statics when you have F1 and F2, you want to replace them with the resultant? Mm -hmm. R equal F1 plus F2. Sum of the moment of this force about this force, which is F1 times this distance, must be equal to R times this distance. And that's how you determine the location of R. Or the other way around. It's the first exercise in statics. So how much do you think we're going to take the stress in the concrete? How much? How much? So we're going to have an average stress over that area of 85% of prime C, 0.85 of prime C. And this distance from here to here, we're going to call it A small. The depth of this region is A small. Is it equal to C? Is it equal to C? Not at all. It is equal to beta 1 C. Well, what's beta 1? Is a factor. What's beta 1? Is a factor. Known factor. Don't worry about it. Beta 1 is given factor. You know how much is beta 1? It's 0.85. If F prime C is 4 KSI or less, and it decreases by 0.05 for every increase of 1 KSI of F prime C. So easy, look. If F prime C is 4 KSI, what's beta 1? If F prime C is 5 KSI, what's 0.8? 1 6 KSI? 7.5. 7 KSI? 7. 8 KSI? 6.5 stays 6.5. So if F prime C is less than 4 KSI, 1.85. If it's above 8 KSI, 0.65. In between, it decreases by 0.05. Given to you in the book, in the handouts, I'm telling you. Good? So don't worry about it. It's just a name, beta 1. A equal beta 1 C. C equal A over beta 1. So that's A. So the resultant here is what now? C, capital. The resultant is C. It's in the middle of A, because this is rectangle. So the distance from here to here is how much? A over 2. A over 2. So that's your C, and that's your T. And the distance from between C and T is what? D minus A over 2. D minus A over 2. <clears throat> right? And at ultimate, most of the time, we are dealing with under-reinforced sections. Under-reinforced sections. When I say under-reinforced section, what do we mean, Glenn? Under-reinforced. It means the stress in the steel each F1. The steel yielded, when I say under-reinforced, most of the sections like that. Actually, 
you are forced to design. If it's a new design, the steel must yield. Any new design. You may have a member that's 100 years old or 50 years old that is over reinforced, too much steel is put in there. But <coughs> any section must be designed for the steel to yield, must be under reinforced. So this one here for under reinforced section, tension equal what? Because I'm multiplying this area of steel by what? Stress in the steel. I'm multiplying by the stress in the steel, which is 1 4 of y. Remember when I told you the stress in the steel for the transform? If I transform, the stress in the steel will be n times the stress in the concrete. So this is the stress in the concrete at the level of the steel, this is correct. But if we are dealing with Fs, which is I put 1 4 of y, this doesn't exist. So in the formula for, where is the cracking? Here, the one was here. When I put 0.4 of y in here, and it's not there. Okay, and even removed from here. Understanding that this is the stress in the steel. This is the stress in the steel. It's not the stress in the concrete at the level of the steel. It's the stress in the steel. My bad, correct that. So I'm elastic from the second part equal AS 0.4 FY JD because this is the stress in the steel likewise here I'm multiplying by the stress in the steel which is FY I'm multiplying by this okay so if I tell you what's this is the case of ultimate, right? By the way, C will be here. As I said, C will be more than A. And where are we going to bring C? Uh, sorry, so this is C. Where are we going to bring C from? From the strain distribution. We said C is A over beta 1, and beta 1 is this than 1. So C, C will be bigger than that. So if I tell you what's, this is the case, this is the stress at ultimate. So this is the nominal. When it crush, it will be something like that, equivalent to that. So what's MM? The nominal capacity of the beam. What is it? It's T or C times the distance between them. So M and equal what, guys? T times what? What's the distance between them? D minus A over 2. Equal AS FY D minus A over 2 with the steel yield, which is the case for under the reinforced section and the balance condition. Right? Right? <coughs> or or ML equal C times D minus A over 2 equal what's C? This area. It is 0.85 of prime C times A, right? Times D minus A over 2. Is this correct? C equal C capital, which is the compression in the concrete, equal 0.85 times A times D minus A over 2. Is this correct? Missing the width of the section. This guys is over B. This stress is over B. 
So 185 F prime C B A. 185 F prime C B A times D minus A over 2. That's an N, believe it or not. That's an N before we apply any factor of safety. <coughs> Later on, when we do the design strength, which is phi M N, we're going to have the phi factor in there. What's the phi factor? It's going to be 0.9 or less than 0.9, depending on the strain in the steel at ultimate. Depending on the strain in the steel at ultimate. Good? That's the nominal capacity of the section, M N, which we're going to use this one for design after we learn what's the factor of safety, what is, what is the strength reduction factor, the phi factor, similar to the one that we studied in steel, the phi factor, a strength reduction, fa reduction factor. Why? Because we are using the LRFD approach. We're going to have a strength reduction factor. Good. So now, what's the strain distribution at ult ult ultimate looks like? By the way, now tell me, what's the only unknown in here? Is this straightforward if I give you a set for this section? For this section, can you calculate M? Okay, let's try. Yes, yeah, given. By the way, what's the area of number nine? Nine inches. One square. One inch square. We have three of them, so AS is three inch square. So three times what? Sixty KSI, right? Mm -hmm. Times D what? What's D? Twenty-two. We assume a cover of two inch. Given information. Times 22 minus. Stuck, right? Mm -hmm. Stuck. What's A? It's unknown. What's A? It's unknown. The only unknown here is A. What do we where do we get A from? When you're stuck in reinforced complete, you know what you do? Anytime you're stuck, you put T equals C. Tension equal combustion. You get everything. To get A, do the following. T equal C. AS FY equal what? 0.85 F prime C B A. Right? Y equal 0.85 F prime C B A. So A equal what, guys? A S F Y, what's that? That's T over 0.85 F prime C B. Is there anything unknown in here now? A S is given. F Y is given. 0.85 is given. F prime C is given. B is given. Right? So you can get MN for this section after you calculate A. Good? So I always tell my students, remember those two formulas. MN equal ASFY D minus A over 2. What's A? ASFY over 0.85 of prime CV. That's what you need to know. MN is ASFY D minus A over 2. What's A? ASFY 0.85 of prime CV. Some guys, they like to combine them. Some guys, they like to combine them. In other words, what they do, they put this guy in here. They just like it, this way. Let's do it. So, M N equal <coughs> AS of Y, right? D minus this guy. AS Fy over 0.85 F prime C B. Some guys they like to do it this way. What is that? Uh, at the bottom of the A. That's one. true. Yeah. Over A minus two. This is A. Sorry, A divided by two. This is A minus two. Perfect. Right. This one. Yeah. So they combine the two equations. They say, why do you have two equations? Let's have one equation. And they simplify it in another way. They do the following. Look what they do. What's AS, guys? 
Okay. AS. What's the relationship between AS and rho? What's rho? So what's AS? Rho. So this is rho B D. Do we agree? This rho B D. Good. AS rho equal AS over B D. AS equal rho B D. Good. F Y. Now D times what's this? Rho B D. Rho B D F Y over 2 times 0.85 F prime C P. Good? P is cancelled. He is cancelled, as he Paul says. Can't make him sad. So that's B is cancelled. Can I get D out? There's a D here and there's a D in here. I'm gonna get D out. So what we're gonna have in here is what? D squared. So it's gonna be rho b d squared of what? 1 minus. What's left in here? Look. It's left. Rho of y over f prime c. 1 over this number. 1 divided by 2, 0.85. Or 0 0.5 over 0.85. Right? 1 divided by 2 times that. The 1 divided by 2 is 0.5 at the top, right? So it's 0.5 divided by that. 0.5, 9, rho, f, y, over f, prime, c. And that's your I'm at. With one equation. So how you can apply this? You can come here, and you say, this section, rho equal 3 divided by 12 divided by 22. So that's your rho. B is 12. D is 22. So, rho is known. B is 12, that's 22, of y equals 60, 1 minus 0.59, rho is rho, of y, front seat, down. As I told you, you can memorize it this way, that's absolutely fine with me. Or, AS of y, D minus A over 2, A equals AS of y over 0.85 of front seat, B. Good? Good? There's one more way I'm going to show it to you in a minute. How they like to see it. Some guys they like to see it this way. Good? <coughs> That's M and not the design. How much time do we have? Five minutes. Good. So that's M and I still did not talk about the design. If I tell you what's the nominal capacity of the section, that's M and What's the design strain to the section? There is a fee. The fee is has a story by itself. It's not point nine. It can be 0.9 for some cases. It can be less than 0.9. So I'm going to show you how you calculate that. We still did not talk even about the strain distribution. We did not talk about the strain distribution, which is very important. Good? Now, what's the strain at alternate? What's the strain at alternate? Let's draw it. We will draw the strain distribution. Is it linear or nonlinear? <coughs> Most linear article point. Basic assumption. Plane section before bending. Plane section before bending remain plane after bending. This assumption, this assumption means the strain distribution is linear. Have some non-linearity, but it's very accurate or okay to approximate it as linear. The strain distribution is linear at ultimate. The stress is, the stress is not. So it's linear. Look how nice it is now. Linear at ultimate. What's this point here? That's the strain in the concrete. Epsilon C. Equal, he said point zero, zero 003. Assumption. Fixed point. Right? Linear. That's the location of the steel. So this is epsilon S, right? 
That's the stress in the steel. Based on this value, sorry, that's the strain in the steel. Based on this value, we will determine what? We will determine what's the V factor. What's the strength reduction factor? Is it 0.5 or not? Now, look, you know everything almost there. What's this here? That's the location of the neutral axis. What does it? See? See? Yes. Small. What's this one here? The distance from the top to the center of the steel. D. D. This is C and this is D. Right? Look at this now. Let me do this similarity. What's this? What's this? One zero zero three. Right? Right? That's one. This, this. There is a similarity between this guy, small, right? And this big guy. C over D equal 0 0.003 over 0 0.003 plus epsilon s. C over D equal this over this. C over D equal 0 0 0.003 over 0 0 0.003 plus epsilon s. Similar triangles between this guy and this guy. Right? So I told you, for the balanced condition, how much the strain in the steel will be? Lower. One zero zero. Two. Three over five. So the balanced condition, C over D, the ratio between the neutral location of the neutral axis with respect to D is three over five. One six. For the tension control section, how much the strain in the steel? 0 0.005. 0.005. 3 over 8. So C over D is 0.375. 3 over 8. Good? 3.003 over 0.003 plus 0.005. So 3, 8. Good? The SEI code says in no case we allow you to design a reinforced complete member when the strain in the, st in the steel is less than 0.004. They don't allow it. The strain in the steel, you must push the, strain, the steel to have a strain at least 0.004. And that's the maximum steel you can put. Listen. Look, if you put a steel that will give you the strain in the uh, that will give you a strain in that steel 0.004. If you decrease that steel a little bit, the strain will increase. If you add steel more than that limit, the strain will decrease. Mm -hmm. right? So the maximum steel you can put must give you a strain in the steel 0 0.004. And from there, they define raw max. Soon we're going to define raw max and raw minimum. So corresponding to raw max, C over D would be 3 over 7. You know, it's not magic. I'm saying 3 over 5, 3 over 8, 3 over 7. Not magic. Right? Look, again, I said you have a tension control section. Strain in the steel must be greater or equal to how much? 1, 0, 0, 5. If you have a tension control section, what's the phi factor? The strength reduction factor. The design strength will be phi times m n. That phi factor is how much? 0.9. That's the maximum. The most economical. Right? So, to check phi equal 0.9 or not, C over D must be less or equal 3 over 8. 0.375. If C over D less or equal 0.375, right, the phi factor is 0.9. If not, there is an equation for the phi factor. Good? So easy. Now, you tell me, okay, so I have D. Where do I get C from? Cool. Where do you get C from? From A. Where do you get A from? A S of Y over 0.85 of run C B. Then C equal A over beta 1. 
and beta 1 equal 0.85 or something else. You can see from there, you plug it in this one here. If it's this one equal 0.375, the V factor equal 0.9. If not, there is an equation to control that. I'm going to continue with the ultimate. I'm going to start designing. I'm going to give you next time sections to calculate the design strain and to calculate the elastic limit and to calculate the graphing. And then we're going to have a design problem from scratch. Design a beam for the following loads. Okay? So see you Wednesday. Okay, guys? Try to calculate, um, try to calculate those next time. Try. Okay. Would be nice if you guys if you can come up with this number. I'm going to ask Jessica and Gerald and some guys in here for what's the number to make sure you guys get the same number. Don't ask me. Everybody.